So Democratic lawmakers in the Senate are ready to move on with President Biden's new infrastructure plan, even without Republican support. And many Americans will start to get another form of stimulus payments very soon. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So in this video, we will be discussing the latest news surrounding your Ford stimulus check. Like I said, the Democrats are ready to pass the infrastructure bill without the help from Republicans. But what are your thoughts on this everybody? Should the Democrats pass another stimulus bill? And do you think the country needs it? Leave a comment down below saying yes or no everybody. The issue that I'd like to touch upon today is Social Security, perhaps the most important federal program in existence, a program of enormous consequence to the 59 million seniors, people with disabilities, and children. Look at what I did. And Bernie, will you acknowledge your campaign took out of context that whole exchange between Paul Ryan? Are you saying PolitiFact is wrong? Are you saying Yeah, well, Post believe me, the Washington Post PolitiFact is wrong a whole lot of times. Now, Senate Democrats plan to forge ahead with crafting a massive infrastructure package next month, regardless of whether Republicans get on board, as they push to pass a bill this summer. Senators will be out of Washington next week for the Memorial Day holiday, and when lawmakers return, Democrats aim to write an infrastructure plan that touches on everything from transportation to broadband. Chuck Schumer even told Democrats, as the President continues to discuss infrastructure legislation with the Senate Republicans, the committees will hold hearings and continue their work on the Build Back Better agenda, with or without the support of Republican senators. We must pass comprehensive jobs and infrastructure legislation this year. Now folks, President Joe Biden has worked with some Republicans to see if they can strike a bipartisan deal to revamp American infrastructure. After the latest back and forth in their talks, the two sides appear far from an agreement on what should go into a bill and how the government should pay for it. Now as the White House and Republicans struggle to reach a consensus, some Democrats have called on their party to try to pass this bill without the Republican support. Now guys, Democrats can do so through the budget reconciliation process, which requires a simple vote majority in the evenly split Senate. Republicans on Thursday sent Biden a letter, but everybody, you have to know this. Republicans on Thursday sent Biden a $928 billion infrastructure counteroffer. It came in at roughly half the $1.7 trillion proposal the White House last sent to the GOP. And the Biden administration first put forward a $2.3 trillion infrastructure plan. Jen Psaki praised constructive additions to road, bridge, and rail spending. She said the White House remains concerned about Republicans' proposed spending, along with, the, along with the party's calls to pay for infrastructure, with previously passed crisis relief funds. The White House has said it expects nearly all of the aid money to be sent, to be spent, redirecting the funds to jeopardize support for small businesses and hospitals. The wealthy Americans currently pay a top federal tax rate of 20% on those returns. Everybody, do you think this is a good idea? I would love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Now, parents are anxiously waiting July 15th, which is the start of the monthly child tax credit payments. The child tax credit got a boost from the American Rescue Plan. The new enhanced credit increases the annual benefit per child age 17 and younger to $30,000 to $3,000 from $2,000 for 2021. It also gives an additional $600 benefit for children under the age of 6 for the 2021 tax year. The full expanded benefit is available to all children 17 and under. The monthly payments could be as much as $300 per month for children under the age of 6 and $250 per month for those between the ages of 6 and 17. For now folks, the monthly payments are scheduled to continue through the end of the year and families will claim the rest of the credits when they file their 2021 taxes next year. Thank you for watching, everybody, and until next time, have a great day and stay safe. Because as a nation, we must always remember, always remember. We must remember the price that was paid for our liberties, and we must remember the debt we owe those who have paid it, the families left behind. My heart is torn in half by the grief the communities never whole again. Folks, it's also an important tradition in our family. As many of you know, this is a hard day for us. Six years ago today, Hunter lost his dad and I lost my son. It's the first year as passing back in 2016, General Vavala did a great honor in inviting us to a ceremony renaming the Delaware National Guard headquarters in Bo's honor. By the way, I'd note that uh, Bo uh, made the grade of major in, uh, in Iraq, I said, 
I've been in and out of Iraq over 25 times. I said, Bo, you're now a field grade officer. He said, Dad, I have no illusion who runs the United States Army. It's the Master Sergeants. <laughs> they run the Army. Well, I woke up that morning hearing Bo in my ear saying, not me, Dad. Today's not about me. It's Memorial Day. You should be over at the bridge. And you know, if he were here, he would be here as well. Paying his respects to all those, all those who gave so much for our country, particularly honoring the Gold Star families. You know, uh, a lot of time passes, but you all know better than I do, or as well as I do, that the moment that we celebrate it is the toughest day of the year. We're honored, but it's a tough day. It brings back everything. So I can't thank you enough for your continued service to the country. And your, uh, your sons, your daughters, they live on in your hearts and in their children as well. And uh, we have to carry on without them. But I know how hard it is for them. Bo didn't die in the line of duty, but he was serving the Delaware National Guard unit in Iraq for a year. That was one of the proudest things he did in his life. So thank you for allowing us to grieve together today. I know how much the loss hurts. I know the black hole that leaves in the middle of your chest. It feels like you may get sucked into it and not come out. Greetings like this uh, in gatherings help. And uh, while I know nothing uh, I can say to ease the pain, I just know that each year it gets a little bit, a little bit easier. And I promise you the day will come when the mention of the name of your son or daughter, husband, wife, they will, in fact, bring it, not a tear to your eye, but a smile to your lips. Folks, uh, and I hope that day comes sooner than later. Folks, uh, you know, uh, despite all the pain, I know the pride you feel in the uh, loved one and uh, that you lost, those who are still serving pride and the bravery and the service to our great American experiment. Our military community is the uh, solid spine of this country. It's literally the spine of the nation. And on my first Memorial Day as Commander-in-Chief, I want to reaffirm my long-standing belief. We may have many obligations as a nation, but we only have one truly sacred obligation, and that's to equip those we send into harm's way with all they need, care for them and their families, 